like a spider monkey. A few weeks ago, a very large carrier in the United States, SIA, which is an LTL, a less than truckload company, disclosed that it would no longer carry assembled or disassembled firearms. The ban would cover the shipment of parts that could be assembled into a firearm once the carton was open. They mentioned that they will continue to transport individual parts such as guns and barrels. It also continues to transport ammunition. So it appears that SIA is looking at things along the same lines as probably UPS, looking at ghost guns, 80% homemade firearms, parts, kits, and whatnot. We're kind of seeing that, all right, there's some stuff going on, but where is this originating from? All of these guys, these are competitors. All of these guys are not all of a sudden starting, starting to think alike. Well, it appears it comes from the federal government, more namely five Democratic U.S. senators, who have asked 22 trucking and logistics companies and the country's six Class 1 railroads to divulge firearm shipment data out of concern that, quote, security loopholes are contributing to rising gun violence. So I found the letter. The letter is clearly an open-ended threat of what things are coming. And of course, with the fire being turned up with the Supreme Court rulings that are somewhat benefiting firearms owners, clearly this is gonna be a retaliatory tool that they're going to use to force and intimidate some of these shipping companies. Let me give you the body and the content of the letter that the senators sent out to all of these companies. It starts out by saying, we're writing to request information on the number of firearms shipped by your company during the last five years. We are concerned that, quote, lax shipping security measures are contributing to the epidemic of gun violence in this country by allowing criminals to use stolen firearms to commit crimes. Interesting how criminals are never held accountable. By lax shipping security by shipping companies, so the senators already showing their hand. They're, they're blaming these shipping companies already with their requests, but by blaming them for lax security measures, they're saying that they are contributing to the epidemic of, quote, gun violence in this country because these shippers are, quote, allowing criminals to use stolen firearms to commit their crimes. You have got to be kidding me. I, I don't even I don't even know how to process this. This this is in the first paragraph. So this is clearly a shot across the bow to get your attention so you pay attention to the rest of this. Now, read the second paragraph. Federal law imposes strict rules on parties shipping firearms in interstate commerce. So these senators are acknowledging that the government the federal government, which whom these senators are actually representing, that they are responsible for setting the rules and regulations surrounding the shipment of firearms. So while they're sitting here trying to blame these, these transportation and shipping companies, they immediately state that they themselves already have regulations in place. Makes me wonder, so how good are those restrictions? Not that I'm implying we should have more. I think less government and letting us control our own destiny is the right way to get things done properly. But these people are clearly stating right here that they are the ones that are the ones writing the rules. Skipping down that same paragraph, it says in 2016, the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms required FFLs, but not shippers, to notify law enforcement within 48 hours if a firearm is lost or stolen in transit. Okay, so they're trying to say that lost or stolen firearms are the responsibility of the shippers who get their security rules and regulations from the government. So if the federal government failed to require shippers to abide by the same rules and regulations as FFLs, whose fault is that? Why would a shipper hold themselves to the same rules of a federal firearms license holder when it's not required. There's enough regulations getting in the way of people performing a profitable business already. They mentioned that a shipment of 46 stolen shotguns was also linked to a theft at a Southern California rail yard. Let me explain something real quick and I'm not gonna go too far off on this tangent. But the government in California is who created this problem. During COVID when we had all these supply chain issues, the state of California thought it would be a great idea to take owner operators out of the mix when it comes to be able to ship merchandise and, and ship things in the state of California. What's that mean? Union. Owner operators, little independent guys, no longer need you. Well, a vast majority of the shippers, 18-wheeler drivers, truck drivers in the country are owner operators. 
This means that you just minimize the staff within the state of California that can go to these ports and grab these containers and move them on, even including the rail yards themselves. So what happened? Criminals watch these rail cars sit on these train tracks, accessible by anybody, and we all know that a lot of these train tracks run right through bad sections of town, and they essentially broke into there and stole tons of stuff. Tons of stuff. What a self-inflicted wound this was. Because if you would have allowed owner-operators to continue to move merchandise through the state of California to the rest of the country, this would have never happened. This was clearly a self-inflicted wound. And they're using this scenario to try to say, this is why we got a problem. Now, these guys are never shy about blaming the Trump administration for anything positive that happened, and now it's negative, so it's got to be Trump's fault, right? They're talking about during COVID that we had a ramp up in all of the firearms purchases. Now, if you'll remember, Trump made firearms companies, uh, even mom and pops that sell them retail, made them all essential. Because if you remember, they tried shutting everything down. They tried to lock down the entire country. And then we started looking at essential businesses. Firearms manufacturers and firearms companies were deemed essential. So they were allowed to stay open and continue to do business. Well, they're blaming the Trump administration for that influx in guns, as if that's a bad thing, because let's remember, all these people filled out every single gun that was sold during that, that came from a manufacturer, was sold via a background check. Every single one, not some. These were all brand new purchases from manufacturers to dealers to uh, mom and pop shops to retail outlets. They all required, all required a Form 4473 to be filled out. So every single one of those guns was sold legally. What's the problem? They say that these gun sales skyrocketed in part because the Trump administration declared that FFLs were essential business and therefore exempt from many pandemic restrictions. This decision allowed dealers to sell more guns than ever before. Guys, they're telling you what they're thinking. They're saying that their intent all along was to have these shut down. Watch the next time we have their new pandemic that comes out. The new lockdowns are going to come along, and now they're going to say gun companies and gun stores are not essential. You watch. They're telling you what they're thinking right here before they do it. They go on to say that these firearms manufacturers provided new opportunities for criminals to exploit the, quote, weak regulations and lack security measures in shipment process. Again, I'm beating this dead horse, beating it, beating it. These are government mandated regulations. They were thought up, written, disseminated, and they're enforced by the federal government. But yet they're saying that the criminals exploited these weak regulations. This is their hint that they intend to strengthen all of the regulations supporting or surrounding shipment and sale of firearms. They go on to say, for these reasons, we're concerned that shippers are not taking the necessary steps to protect firearm shipments and do their part in addressing the gun violence crisis facing this country. This is where the likes of UPS came in. They guilted these companies, and they're in the process of guilting these companies, into thinking that they are part of the problem. Do you want to be part of the solution? Then you need to address the gun violence crisis, which obviously just stops shipping any kind of gun parts out there. Now, how am I tying all this back to the UPS story from yesterday? Well, obviously, it's directly related to it. In fact, UPS is one of the recipients of this letter from the senators early last month. But I had a viewer who works for one of the large companies that's on this list, the shipping companies, that reached out to me. And he sent me an inner office letter from his company. Now, I've redacted out the things that would get this traced back to him because I would never do anything to jeopardize anybody's job who is trying to help me out as far as getting word out there. At first glance, this did not seem like a big deal. It seemed like, well, you know, there's definitely a commonality out there, but I didn't see anything until this jumped out at me. Let's look first at the senator's letters that went out to all these shipping companies. Look at number 1B, where it says, how does your company define firearms for these purposes? Are imitation firearms, frames, receivers, ammunition, and silencers included in this definition? How many of you guys, when you're talking about the gun business, do you even consider using the word imitation firearms? Those two words jump out at me when I see it because we don't commonly use that. That's not something that we normally use. And we're gun guys. So we have senators using the phrase imitation firearms. When I read their letter, 
it didn't totally jump out at me, other than the ridiculous nature of an imitation firearm now being precluded from any kind of shipment or whatever that the government's trying to, to mitigate. I thought that was kind of stupid. So toy guns now, replica guns now, are not going to be able to be shipped. Just thought it was ridiculous. Until I read my viewer's inner office email from the shipping company that he works for. It reads, Given the regulatory scrutiny of firearm shipments and the inherent risk involved in transporting firearms, this company will no longer be handling shipments of any type or kind of firearms or its component parts, such as shotguns, handguns, imitation firearms. Guys, this is practically a copy and paste from the senator's letter. So clearly, these companies are now going to stop shipping. This, this guy is not telling me that his company is going to stop shipping, quote, ghost guns like UPS just did. This interoffice memorandum is saying that they're not going to handle shipments of any type or any kind of firearms or its component parts, such as shotguns, handguns, imitation firearms, air guns, frames, or receivers. This is across the board. This change does not affect shipments of ammunition. Oddly enough, we'll talk about that in a minute. This change will become effective July 1st, 2022, when firearms components parts will be added to our prohibited commodities list. So as of today, this is in effect already. This large carrier, which I'm sure the name will come out next week. I'm not going to put it out there out of respect to my friend that sent this. But clearly, guys, this is across the board. Companies are just going to opt out. They're just going to say it's not worth the trouble because... The federal government is now mandating all of this extra stuff that now is going to cost them a ton of money anyway because they have to chase all this stuff down. And they're tipping their hand. They're saying what they intend to do. They're essentially telling you that these are the things that we're going to start requiring from you and to expect stricter regulations down the road. What does this mean to us? You can believe it means higher prices for sure. Right off the bat, it's going to be higher prices. Now, is it going to be harder to get things? Probably. Will somebody step in and probably take the lead on a lot of this stuff and just assume that additional role? Probably. Somebody will benefit from this. Um, I actually heard from another person that uh, FedEx employees were actually celebrating because they've been hearing about a lot of this stuff, and now they're going to be making way more money. So it sounds like FedEx is intending to take on a lot of this. Good for them. You know, really good for them. In fact, um, if this does come out to, in fact, be true that FedEx sticks to their guns, which they're massive, massive, massive. In fact, I was told that they are the largest less than truckload LTL type company. They are the, as far as the 18 wheelers, they are the biggest out there as far as moving shipments like that. So it sounds like they probably can stick to their guns because money talks. Obviously, somebody will get lobbied in Washington and look the other way. These five senators probably will be okay because they'll make money from FedEx as lobbyists in order to have them look the other way. So unfortunately, it's dirty and this is what's going to happen. But it does appear that this is going to affect us maybe from a supply standpoint. It may bog down the supply chain even more than what it already is. And again, it's going to increase the prices. I mean, once you limit the amount of shippers out there, all those that are left now can jack the prices up because there's nobody else competing to lower the prices. I got to say it again. They're so mad at the Supreme Court rulings that have come out. Their hair has burned off of their heads. They're so, so pissed off right now. And they are doing everything that they can possibly do to manipulate this market and make it harder and harder and harder for honest, law-abiding Americans to purchase, possess, own, and carry firearms. Look for way more of this to come down, and I'm sure we're going to see a lot more next week because it sounds like a lot of these policies are going to go in place very, very soon. Like a spider monkey.